Hi, um, I'm Mike Wamsley, Global Product Manager at TE Connectivity. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today actually builds on what I uh, presented last year. Um, there's a lot of activity and a lot of new interconnect development that fits in with the trends, a lot of what we heard this week already. Um, but it's about meeting the demand and the speed for, for speed and density in the interconnect platform, specifically in a VPU, a VPX uh, 3U slot. Um, so I'm going to go through that example and, and build on that and show where some of our technology trends are, show them what products we're releasing and, uh, and where we're moving. Um, so some of the trends we talked about uh, this week were faster processes, more cores, increased I.O., a lot, of more, a lot more functionality within a module, uh, reducing swap. That's always been a critical um, piece of our, our portfolio. Uh, we talked about the, the high growth in the number of 3U VPX uh, systems that are being developed. <coughs> Um, the open systems architecture and modular scalable systems. So from our standpoint as a, as a connectivity supplier, um, those challenges are still there. The signal integrity becomes more and more important. Um, a lot of our new designs are de developed for higher speeds, higher frequencies, and um, we need to establish that, um, that in, in our products on the front end. Um, more functionality within the modules, higher density uh, solutions, Obviously, if we can build higher density into the interconnect portion, we can get more into a, into a VPX uh, 3U slot. Um, lightweight materials. And also interesting, we're, we're developing more and more standards where we're developing the interconnect standards, but there's a, lot of, there's a need to get that flexibility within the applications. Um, so we're developing interconnect standards that can be adopted into multiple applications and configured so that the des system designer um, can use those building blocks in their systems. Um, so this was a slot, um, a slot profile I used, and an example of that in Vita 65, there's over 100 slot profiles today. Um, so we talk about the building blocks. This is an example of a slot profile that uses the RF optics and the digital, um, digital uh, Vita 46 connector. So today uh, we're at um, 32 diff pairs within that slot at 10 gigabit per second, uh, four RF contacts at 26 and a half gigahertz and 12 to 24 optical links. So our intention, what we're looking at for future platforms is 32 um, diff pairs at 25 gig, uh, doubling the RF content and doubling the optical content within that module. So we can get a lot more bandwidth and a lot more density within that same small 3U space. And obviously some of these building blocks, they apply to 6Us as well. So we can carry that technologies over and expand them into, into larger slot sizes. Um, so how we got there, um, we, we, we were looking at, um, we we're looking at high density modules. I'll talk about these three products today. The high density optical modules, we get two MTs into a half module space. Uh, we've got high density nano RF product that we're launching this year. Uh, and we've got the multi-gig RT3, which you heard a little bit about yesterday. Um, so RT3 has been in development for a while. We've put pro probably a solid two years of SI work into um, establishing that next generation um, VPX feed of 46 compatible connector. Um, today, RT2 and RT2R implemented at 10 gigabit per second solutions. Uh, but we had this target, and, and actually when we set this target within, um, within our biz business, we said, okay, let's get to the 16 gigabit level, let's handle PCIe Gen 4, uh, and then look at iterations that would get us to 25 gig. Um, so the, the, what came back was, let's work for that 25 gig generation. We actually did not know if we could maintain the same VPX interface and support 25 gig lanes, uh, but we were able to prove that we could. Um, so there's been a significant amount of work, so we can, co co we can um, carry through to, um, excuse me, PCIe Gen 4, cover current InfiniBand FDR, um, cover Ethernet uh, 100 gig KR4. The um, product's intermatable with Vita 46, so we took that same matable, same interface. Um, so configurable, we can back, we can do reverse uh, mating configuration. If you've got an RT2R backplane or a Vita 46 backplane today, you can plug the RT3 connectors into those. Um, it's the same rugged interface that we introduced with the RT2R product. Uh, so we developed the RT2R around um, high vibration conditions. We tested it to a Vita 72 extreme vibration uh, platform, and uh, we've used that same interface here, so it will serve those same markets. 
Uh, we did reduce the compliant pin size, so getting the smaller compliant pin and smaller through holes on the board uh, makes a difference in the uh, signal integrity. It's a big part of that. Um, it brings the impedance up, uh, reduces some of the noise at the footprint, and uh, was a significant <laughs> contributor. And we also integrated, um, uh, RT3 can be integrated in the same slots with RT2. So it's the same form factor, fits in the same profile slots. Uh, so a standard P0 or a, uh, a P, P1 today in an RT2 configuration uh, can accommodate RT3 in those, in those positions where those high-speed signals are required. Um, so I'm going to go over a, a, a little bit of SI. Uh, our SI team can spend four hours. I've seen it four hours with a customer talking about the SI benefits and all the modeling that was done in the analysis. Um, I asked our guys to put it into one slide. I said, I only have like 15, 20 minutes to talk, so can you put ev everything into maybe one consolidated slide for me? Um, but so we, we do connector-only models. Um, where we take the connector, we take a very small portion of the footprint just into the vias and look at uh, modeling and optimizing that, that uh, structure. Um, so we've seen some, some sharp gains in the insertion loss and especially re return loss. So we look at some of the frequencies that are fundamental frequencies uh, for like 25 gig lanes in 100 gig uh, KR4. Um, you're about at 8 dB uh, improvement in return loss with, it, with this product. Uh, we did channel models as well. So when we do channel models, we do uh, more nominal impedance, no skew, um, and uh, evaluate that in, in low loss board materials. Um, so that's what I'm gonna show you. Uh, what Ivan Sersenicki of uh, Curtis Wright showed yesterday was in a, in a true channel model where uh, the, the impedance is based on the system, there, there are, there's some skew factored in, um, and gives a real world application. So. Um, that effort and that uh, evaluation that we worked with Curtis Wright was very valuable to us. Um, but in these channel models, um, so when we looked at uh, 16 gig, we looked at PCIe Gen 4, uh, we looked at the I, uh, height and width, uh, we met easily the, uh, the requirements for the PCI, PCIe Gen 4 requirement. When we ran that through a COM analysis in 100 gig KR4, uh, we looked at, again, we, we took in this case four, four inches of trace on the plug-in cards, 16 along the back plane, um, and we met uh, the uh, 3dB requirement uh, comfortably with the RT3 connector. Uh, and we did map that out in the RT2R to show the limitations that we cannot reach 25 gig with that solution. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about nano RF too, because um, what while we're working on the digital side, we're also working on increasing density within the RF uh, platform. So our original goal was take the Vita 67, uh, which is very defined into four and eight position um, RF contacts based on an SMPM interface. How do we double the density within that platform? So in this case, uh, you can see an example of a full module, a 67.2 module alongside the nano RF. Uh, we've got a very small, um, contact at 110 inch spacing, uh, 65 gigahertz. Actually, we're rating it to 70 gigahertz. Uh, we've run that sweep up higher uh, with excellent isolation. And we're, um, when we started looking at it, we said, okay, we're gonna shrink the contact size down. The center pin ends up being about a 10 mil pin. So when you get into very small uh, RF interfaces, uh, the alignment tolerances are very important. So we went back to where Vita 66 is, where you're aligning MT ferrules, you've got you know, maybe nine micron fibers that you're trying to align. Why don't we use that same technology and build that into the, into the RF platform? So we're using um, a floating insert uh, where you've got an array of contacts very tightly positioned in a floating insert on a backplane. Um, that has a self-aligning feature in it. In this case, it's shown with a guide blade. Um, you can see on the lower right. Uh, so as these cards come together, you have your standard guide hardware on the, um, on the outside of the card. Um, and then you have this guide blade or guide feature that will, will align, provide more true alignment of the RF contact arrays before they engage. Uh, so we feel we've got a very rugged solution and um, it's going to um, uh, support those, um, those blind mate uh, cycles that are out in the field. Uh, if we step back, 67.3, we just finished up Vita 67.3 in the standards group. Um, and what that did is a few things. It, it adds more module sizes uh, where we're addressing, um, we're addressing slot profiles that are uh, at, uh, at one inch pitch. 
instead of 0.8 inch pitch. So we're not limiting ourselves to that smaller profile. We're able to expand the, the space within the module where you can place the RF contacts. Um, and we're increasing the flexibility of where those contacts can go. So in this case, um, this example on the bottom left here is a DRS Vesper product. Um, it's got nine RF contacts. You can see they're in multiple rows. Um, but as a, as an, in, in an application, you could define where you want those RF contacts to be uh, and calling out the location of them. The contacts themselves are standardized. So there's some flexibility and more space, more module space to work with when you get into uh, 67.3. Um, it also flips the interface so the float goes on to the backplane contact. In the original Vita 67, it was on the plug-in card. So now in your plug-in modules, you can uh, terminate directly to the board. You don't need cabling within those modules. So there's an advantage there as well. So if we look at how that affects nano RF, um, we've got more module sizes to work with. So in this case, instead of just doubling, um, you know, getting eight contacts within a half module, we can get 12. Uh, we've got a little bit more space to work with. We can put the, those guide features in. Um, and you'll notice we've got two small guide pins in here versus the guide blade. And that's the way we're heading down uh, for future applications. Uh, what that does is that allows us to get some flexibility on where those guide pins occur. Um, if you look at the center position, this is a full module. We've got 26 RF contacts into a full module with the guide pins on the outside edges. Um, so it's pretty exciting. We're also working on the, the edge launches. So um, as we have with the 67.3, we can edge launch off the card. So we're working on configurations where we can, we can have that direct attached to the board. Um, having a bullet or an adapter in between and having a front plate with a nano RF interface in front. Um, so 66.4, uh, we do have a dual density uh, version. It's been uh, produced for some time. We just finished up qualification. Uh, but here we have two MT ferrules uh, within a half module instead of a single one, which is in 66.4. So we shrunk down the guide pins, repositioned them. Uh, we were able to put uh, two MTs into that, that small half space. Um, another, uh, another product that uh, we offer that could go behind a Vita 66, so if you've got cabling on your card, is an optical flex. So basically we take a CNC machine, we do a routing of fibers into an array, a uh, predetermined array based on the design, and we, we can uh, apply a substrate to hold it in that position. Uh, we can do that in, a, in different substrate materials, in Kapton um, or other lower temp materials as well. We can put mounting hole features on there, so if you need to mount it to a board, uh, you can. It keeps everything flat. It controls the bend radius. You control the bend radius, so you don't need to, uh, need to address that. And it um, helps routability. So if you're routing fibers from one ribbon to another, uh, we can plan that into the, into the array and, and build that solution set. So we talked about a little about nano RF and uh, and the optical modules, um, and I think uh, Roger had showed this as well. The um, the, the hybrid uh, RF and and optical module that we offer. So that was developed really. So we have one common backplane cut out into a common module. It really doesn't do anything for density. Essentially, you're putting your RF and your optics side by side in their current uh, form factors. Uh, but we've been working with um, Reflex Photonics, who showed their um, Light Connects product earlier this week, or yesterday. Um, and, and we integrated the RF, the Nano RF, into that package. So here you've got a transceiver package directly to the board. Um, you've got RF contacts. We can get 10 RF contacts above it. We've got two guide pins down below to do the alignment of that plate. And by doing that, we've got a single alignment feature with, it, with that plate and the two guide pins that aligns both the RF and the optics at the same time. So it's a really exciting uh, concept for us and to trying to get more density. So if you look at where we are um, today, going back, um, again, we've got the 67.1, um, the uh, 66.4, and the uh, Vita 46 connectors. Where we can go, we can get that 25 gigabits of, uh, of data coming through on the uh, multi-gig lines. So here in this example, you'd have 32 diff pairs at 25 gig, you'd have 12 RF contacts, and you'd have two MTs. Um, you could go, if we use the combo connector, um, if you had, it, had a requirement and the RF and the optics was all handled by that one module, it frees up more space, you can get more, more uh, digital out output. 
But these are building blocks, so you can configure those into your system how you need to. But uh, we see kind of a revolutionary uh, new trend and in, in an increase in density and bandwidth uh, with those solutions. Um, so to talk a little bit about um, the, the status of those, uh, we plan to introduce those into Vita. Um, and uh, we're in qualification. We're production tooled on all those products. We are uh, working, we've built multiple uh, pre-production builds at this point, uh, but our, we have an intention get, getting that into the standards um, as additional dot specs, or we'll talk about that this week, and, uh, and initiate that action. <laughs>